Welcome to this video in which we show how to represent forces that interact with a free body when those forces are uh, supplied by cables or wires or something like that. So um, we have here a picture of a giraffe being raised uh, it's being suspended by, from a cable and on uh, two of its legs it's got cables attached so that uh, people can move it around I guess. Um, Cables and ropes and wires and uh, such can only exert force in the direction that they're attached. So, uh, for example, this cable that's holding the giraffe up can only exert a force in the upward direction. This cable can only exert a f whoops can only exert a force in this direction and so on. Okay. Um, typically the force direction is known and what you don't know is the tension uh, in the cable, the magnitude of the force that it's applying. Um, cables can only create tension. That is, they can, uh, you can only have a force with a cable that goes this direction. You can't use a cable to go the opposite direction because you can't push with a cable. Uh, the idea is that uh, um, cables aren't stiff enough to, to push. Okay, and finally, the last thing that we need to talk about before actually doing it, uh, cables are typically assumed to be weightless, and this is a good assumption when the weight of the cable is much less than the weight of the object it's connected to. This can be a bad assumption when the cable is extremely long um, or when your goal is to figure out uh, how the cable sags due to gravity or something like that. Okay, so we have this poor giraffe suspended from a crane. Uh, we'd like to draw a free body diagram of the giraffe. Okay, and so the first step in drawing a free body diagram is to determine exactly what we want the body to be. We need to cut the giraffe loose from its surroundings. So in this case the giraffe is pretty much cut loose except it's got these three cables. So we'll disconnect it from these three cables. The next step in building a free body diagram is to sketch the giraffe all by itself. And so there we have it. The giraffe is all by itself. The third step is to identify the locations of the forces that are exerted, in this case by cables, uh, but generally by interactions with the environment. And uh, again, we're, we will have this case right here, this one right here, this one right here, and we'll also have um, the giraffe affected by gravity say right there, we'll assume that's its center of mass. And finally, step four then is to go and draw these forces in. So we'll have a force going up due to the cable that's connecting the giraffe to the crane, a force going in approximately this direction due to the people tugging on the rope, another force going in this direction due to the other people tugging on the rope and the weight of the giraffe due to gravity. Okay, now again typically with a cable I don't know what the force being applied by the cable is. Sometimes you're given that information but quite often not. So and typically, well again, the force in a cable is a tension force. So what I might do is uh, label the tension in the force uh, be that's being exerted by the cable um, that's connected to the crane as T1. I might label the magnitude of the force that's exerted by uh, this cable over here as T2 and the magnitude of the force that's exerted by this cable is T3 and I might call the weight of the giraffe W. Okay, now Again, typically, in this example, I know the direction in which these cables are pointing. So, for example, 
This looks to me like about a 30 degree angle. Um, this guy here looks to me to be about a 40 degree angle. And so uh, if I go back to my free body diagram, I can say that the direction here is 40 degrees from the horizontal. And in this case, it's 30 degrees from the horizontal. In the case of uh, the cable that the giraffe is suspended from, uh, let's assume that it's going straight up. Okay, so this is um, this is how you draw a free body diagram when the interactions between the body of interest and its environment are uh, supplied by cables. Again, this also applies typically to ropes or wires, um, things that are bendable, and uh, you can apply a you, you can pull with them. You can have a tension in them but you can't push with them, you can't compress with them. So, this uh, concludes this video. Uh, hopefully you found it useful.